Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. It's been a while since I've seen all of you live. Gosh, it's been since what, last week, Thursday, was it? So we are very excited to be here live at Riverbanks this morning to be welcoming you all in for a very rainy day. Thankfully, we are inside today. We are actually in the Riverbanks Conservation Outpost. But good morning, Caitlin. Good morning, Piper. Nice to see y'all this morning. We're going to be talking about a brand new animal here at Riverbanks. In fact, he's been living here for a handful of months of not only well over a year, actually, behind the scenes, but he now has a home out on Habitat, surprisingly enough, actually, with our two-toed sloths right here this morning. But we're not going to be talking about our sloths. No update on Willow and Coco Joe. Instead, we're devoting the entire morning's feature to weevil our three banded armadillo, which is so exciting for us. So we actually just had some guests walk by here just a second ago and they were watching him scamper all around, but he's getting his breakfast here in just a second. So all of you who are tuning in, you're in for a very special treat with a brand new species here at Riverbanks. Good morning, Anna, Faith, nice to see you all tuning in. Christina, Maxim, Danica, oh gosh, I love to see all these familiar faces even after our very long weekend break that we took from Z Learning. Stevie, good morning. Oh, it is so great to see all of you tuning in live. But I will say I'm not here alone. And not only am I here with Weevil, our sloths that are busy napping, we won't disturb them, but I'm also here with one of our other team members. He's actually our senior mammal keeper of this area. His name is Ryan. Let me go ahead and actually turn the camera around and good say, morning. good morning, Ryan. Nice to see you. Good morning. So Ryan, we are here. We're going to try to socially distance as best we can. We'll keep our masks on, of course, since it's, it's not the biggest people space in the world. But today... We have breakfast served. In fact, what did you prepare for Weevil this morning? So Weevil's morning breakfast is a combination of insectivore chow. He gets very finely chopped sweet potato. Those are going to be those orange bits you see in there. Now what you can't see is the mixed up banana. So he does Ooh. get banana that we mash up and we mix throughout the whole diet. Three banded armadillos have these very soft peg-like teeth. So they're not super great at crunching extremely hard things. Their teeth are actually maximized for crunching bugs. So you'll wow. also notice in here we have mealworms, wax worms, and there is some smaller crickets that are mixed in here as well. Wow. Okay, so I have to ask, is this a special treat for today or is this his typical diet? This is his typical diet. So cool. these guys are big insectivores and that's primarily what they're gonna eat out in the wild. They have these huge, huge front claws and these really, really good noses that they use to root around and sniff out bugs all up in the dirt. Wow. Oh, by the way, hi, Naomi. Thanks for tuning in from Rhode Island. It's so great to see everybody from all around the country. But a lot of people actually, we, so we posted a teaser video yesterday of Weevil kind of making his own nest as kind of a, an excited trailer for today's feature. But a lot of people were a little confused, Ryan, I'll be honest, because they were expecting to see a nine-banded armadillo. Because a lot of people made a comment to, oh, we see those in our backyard. They're here all around. This is a totally different type of animal, is it not? It is. Three-banded armadillos are native to South America, whereas the nine-banded is the only armadillo species that you can regularly find in the United States. They also can be found down in Central and South America, but the three-banded is much smaller than your average nine-banded. Nine-banded armadillos are those big gray ones that you usually see kind of rooting around or on the side of the highway. Oh, the three-banded <laughs> are about the size of a softball, and they're this brown, this brown color that really kind of me melds well with the dirt. Perfect. So definitely related, very different looking. In fact, let me give you kind of a scan of our habitat where we're hanging out today. Um, and Stevie, I saw your question of where did the armadillo come from? Weevil actually came from another accredited zoo that we worked with to actually move him here to Riverbanks. And he has lived here ever since. He's kind of moved around in a couple different behind the scenes areas. But as I'm scanning, I'm guessing you're not really seeing Weevil yet. Ryan, where is Weevil hiding this morning? <laughs> so Weevil has made himself a very, very comfortable bed on in the corner of our exhibit. And Milo's going to pan to it in just oh, a moment here. Let's find it. He's right hiding there. right there. Let me see if I can kind of zoom in on him this morning. He just decided to, to bed down. I promise he was active just a second ago. Oh, Becca, age 12, asked a great question. Is Weevil nocturnal? So these guys are typically nocturnal in the wild, but sure. it is not uncommon to see them actually foraging for bugs in the early parts of the day. 
okay. and the later parts of the day. Gotcha. But they like to spend the hottest part of the day kind of burrowed, resting in the shade. What's cool about these guys is unlike other armadillos, they don't dig these really deep, intense burrows. They actually like to stay pretty close to the top and they'll spend a lot of their time in the wild sleeping under shrubs or brushes so they can stay in the shade without having to fully submerge themselves in the dirt. <laughs> That's amazing. So he's just kind of in a, a light burrow, let's say. I see a few different tunnels around here too. And Faith had a great question. And Ryan, I'm going to have you answer this one, actually. Faith is wondering, what do the sloths think of their new roommate? Have they noticed them? <laughs> do they mind? On the first day, Willow was actually very curious. And she was oh, cool. And the little guy who was kind of running around and making a mess. Right now, it looks very, very nice in here. We just finished cleaning. Willow loves to reorganize and decorate his own home. Uh. Even though every single day, we're going to put these tunnels out, these tubes, enrichment, hay, bedding. By next morning, it's going to be a huge mess in here because he spends the whole night digging up dirt, throwing the mulch everywhere, taking the tubes out of the ground, flipping them, spilling his water, just making as big a mess as he can. Absolutely. Well, it's his home. I guess he gets to do whatever he wants with it. If he wants to redecorate, that's totally up to Weevil. Well, if, Ryan, if you think we're ready, I think yeah, we should absolutely. take a peek at him. He's kind of burrowed down around over here. We're going to kind of keep zoomed in over here. Ryan's going to reach on down and try to gently remind somebody that he has some visitors this morning. Yes. <laughs> All right. So as we pick him up, three banded armadillos have these two unique adaptions that other armadillos don't. So the first one is that they're the only species of armadillo that can roll completely up into a ball. Wow. Willow, or sorry, Weevil is a little <laughs> bit awake, so he's a little exposed right now, but they can pull all of their soft bits into this little ball, including their nose, eyes, ears, and their tail. Damn. Now the second adaptation they have is their ability to thermoregulate. Earlier I said they don't really build these really deep burrows. Yeah. That's because these guys can thermoregulate really well when they're sealed up in a ball. So in the colder months, huh. they actually build those shallow burrows and seal up completely and it gets super warm in there. So when we first come find him in the morning and wake him up, that little burrow that he dug is super warm and it's actually a couple degrees warmer than the entire exhibit itself. Wow. That so, is amazing. It's so neat to see kind of how big of an animal we're talking about, much smaller than the nine banded armadillos that are native up here around our parts of the world. But now he's going to be kind of scooting around. I don't think he knows exactly that he has food waiting for him, but he'll be very excited. Some breakfast. To start having breakfast this morning. Take a look at that claw, everybody. That was exactly what Ryan was talking about. Those big, long claws that he has. But you, of course, can see that Weevil has now comfortably un unballed himself, let's say. But if you check out our caption this morning, armadillos are a very unique type of animal in the sense that they are the only mammals that have those unique shell sort of adaptations. Now, don't think like a turtle shell. Instead, these are bony plates that are covered with really thick leathery skin that helps to protect them from predators. Good morning. It's nice to see all of you tuning in still. Let's go ahead and find some of these questions that y'all have been sending in as we watch Weevil enjoy his breakfast this morning. Oh, Stevie, that's a great question. Do sloths and armadillos typically share habitats out in the wild? They can occupy the same range, but sloths spend most of their entire lives <laughs> up in those trees. The only time you're gonna see a sloth come to the ground is either for mating purposes or to use the bathroom. So even though these guys may live right next to each other in the wild, you won't really see them interact a whole lot. That is such a good point. Making them all the better. Oh, we're going through the tunnel right now. Let's see him bark out the other end. There he is. <laughs> Which makes sense that they can share this habitat so cohesively because they really aren't bothering each other in the sense that Weevil hangs out on the ground and Willow and Coco Joe hang out in the trees. So they really don't mind each other. Let's go ahead. There's a question that came through. I can't find it right now to see whose name it was. But... Weevil lives by himself. Are they typically solitary animals or is there plans to have other armadillos join us here at Riverbanks? These guys are typically solitary in the wild, although they have been spotted in groups of two or three kind of running together, but they enjoy spending most of their time kind of rooting and foraging on their own and then curling up and building their little shallow burrows on their own as well. So Weevil really does not mind having the place to himself. <laughs> he does not and he 
gets to have all the food to himself, all the enrichment, and gets to interior decorate his home every single day without <laughs> any help. And I think he really, really enjoys that. That is hilarious. Oh, Sarah Grace, perfect timing. You were just wondering if they live in groups in the wild. Um, typically not. They actually, just like Ryan said, they prefer to spend their time alone, um, but sometimes have been found in small groups. But being solitary is not uncommon. Alexis Pete William, I love that you're noticing how he's locomoting around. He's going through the tunnel right now. You can hear his little tap dancing. It really does look like he's hovering around. It looks like he's almost gliding. They're very <laughs> smooth at getting from place to place. They actually put a lot of their weight on those big front claws that they have. So you hear those tip taps as he's going through the tunnel. Their back feet have pads like most normal mammals, but he's, they walk almost entirely on their front claws right on the front of their feet. And in the wild, when they're walking through the ground in the dirt, they're constantly searching and looking for bugs using those big claws. Wow. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go ahead and jump on that one? Let's see. We will find... Oh, the... oh, Hannah, great question. You were wondering about his teeth. Ryan was talking a little bit ago about Weevil's teeth. Now, a lot of you are wondering, does Weevil bite? Uh-oh. Hopefully, y'all aren't losing us right now. We're having a little hard time with our our cell service right now in our conservation outpost. Um, but their mouths really don't open up that much. But as Weevil starts to bed down, maybe think about making a nest. I wanna pan on over here. Check out what was eaten out of that breakfast. <laughs> definitely not the sweet potatoes and definitely not that dry diet either. It looks like all the, the worms <laughs> are gone. Not surprisingly, so I'm gonna guess it's safe to say those are the favorites. They are. Um, and as you were saying about his teeth, Three-banded armadillos have these very soft peg-like teeth that are specialized for crushing through the exoskeleton of bugs. So they are primarily insectivores, and they love crunching and eating up all those bugs. So they're definitely his favorite part of his diet. Ooh, Sheldon was just wondering, um, do you actually hide bugs inside the habitat as enrichment for him to find? We've done that before for sure, yeah. Most of the bugs we give him are either chilled or cool. So they're either not really mobile, but we've used super worms and other bugs that we can hide in the substrate or the hay and watch Weevil kind of go and hunt and forage for all of them. What a perfect way to kind of promote those <laughs> natural instincts. Look at that little tail that's sticking out, everybody. They really do have quite the suit of armor all over them. Because with their size, I mean, Weevil is a full-grown adult. That's all the bigger they get, this specific variety of armadillos, which means that they could easily become a snack if they don't have that amazing armor. Okay, those of you who saw that video from yesterday, you get to see it here live. This is how he's making his nests. Now, is this a typical regular thing that he does, bedding down like this? Yeah, oh yeah. That's why we, hay is definitely the easiest for him to kind of pull in. Sure. But you'll notice as he's kind of scooting backwards and using, again, those front claws to pull substrate in around him and build this kind of mound over him. That is a very natural and regular behavior that he will do pretty much daily. Well, and that brings up such a good point, too, because all the guests that are walking by right now are seeing Weevil very active. Um, but like Brian mentioned, they sometimes are more nocturnal than anything else. So you might not see them super active when you come here to visit Riverbanks, if you swing by the Riverbanks Conservation Outpost. But what I do want to recommend as a tip is take a look, scan the whole bottom part of this habitat and look for that armored back that he has to see if you might be able to see what maybe looks like a cantaloupe <laughs> buried under the ground. Because Weevil is really trying his hardest to go ahead and bury himself. Oh, look at this little pile he's making himself. <laughs> How neat. Keep sending in all those great questions, everybody. If we happen to scroll past it, miss it, while we are live, I will jump on our comments later today so that way we can answer all your curiosities. Emma, age four, was wondering, does he sleep a lot? These guys will actually sleep up to 16 hours a day. Whoa. So that, again, that kind of makes him a perfect roommate for a sloth. He's going <laughs> to um, simulate that same style of life where they like to nap and sleep through most of the day. <laughs> that is such a good point. Not only do they share space well, but they have the same kind of activity level, which is going to be a whole lot of snoozing. We will as love in this tunnel, though, that y'all have for him. He just might have to redecorate it later tonight. Oh, he, he for sure will. <laughs> Great questions, everybody. I love that you are sending in all those great questions. 
Oh, those of you who are wondering about that big bear paw right outside of our window, those are all to encourage social distance as we head around the park. So you might notice those paw prints in front of viewing windows and some of our popular areas where people like to stop and linger to encourage everyone to keep a nice social distance. Take a look at him burrowing down. Oh, he made a nice big pile. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what an amazing animal to add to the Riverbanks family. We are so excited to have Weevil not only here at Riverbanks, but now out on Habitat for all of you to connect with and learn more about too. So next time you're at Riverbanks, maybe look for a mound like this. That might be where Weevil's taking a nap. But as you head through the Riverbanks Conservation Outpost, swing on by where the two-toed sloths live and say hey to Weevil and welcome him to the Riverbanks family. But let me go ahead and turn around this camera quick and give a big thank you to Ryan, of course. We couldn't have done it without Ryan. He packed a great breakfast, not for us, but for Weevil. So thanks so much, Ryan. We really appreciate it. Of course. And everybody else, don't forget to tune in tomorrow morning for yet another Z Learning feature. We are going to be going live from inside our construction project. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. We are going to get an update on what the Rhino Habitat looks like tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Don't miss it. It's going to happen rain or shine. I'm going to bring an umbrella if it's pouring rain. So I hope you all tune in. And don't forget, next time you're here at Riverbanks, not only social distance with those help with the bear paws, but swing on over and say hi to Weevil and welcome him to the Riverbanks family. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m.